Let's solve a 2024 PSLE math question today. This area and perimeter question that we're about to do requires some imagination. Are you ready? A rectangular piece of paper is folded along the line AC and cut out as shown. Let's try to imagine what we see when we fold and unfold the paper, okay? When we fold and unfold the paper, this part, which forms a right angle triangle, is the same as this part. Can you see that? This is going to be useful later on. We're given that the length of BC is one quarter the length of BD. What does this mean? This means that when we compare the length of BC to the length of BD, we can represent the length of BC with one unit and the length of BD with four units. At this point, we can tell that the length of CD can be represented by 4 minus 1, 3 units. Let's shift the length of the 4 units that we know to the other opposite side of the rectangular piece of paper. Is everyone following so far? Then let's move on to the next clue. The perimeter of Y is 60 centimeters more than the perimeter of X. This is the key to the question. If we can understand this, we can find how long BD is. First, let's recall what perimeter means. When we talk about the perimeter of something, we are talking about the length of the thing when we add all its sides. Let's simplify the problem by writing down what we know about the sides of X and Y. From the diagram, we can tell that this length of the paper is 50 centimeters. Since the paper is a rectangle, the opposite side, ED, must also be 50 centimeters. Next, let's look at this side of X. Remember that X is made up of two equal triangles? If this side is 50 centimeters, we can tell that this side will also be 50 centimeters. This also means that this side will be 50 centimeters because the shape is cut from the same side. So far so good? Next, let's look at the breadth of the paper. Earlier on, we found that BC can be represented by one unit. Once again, since these two triangles are equal, we can tell that this side must also be one unit. Since we cut the shape here, this side and this side will be the same as well. This side is one unit too. CD is three units and AE is four units. Now that we've found how long all the sides of X and Y are, it's time to think about their perimeter. Let's start with X. To find its perimeter, we're going to add all its side. The perimeter of X is 50 centimeters plus 1 unit plus 1 unit plus 50 centimeters. This works out to be 100 centimeters plus 2 units. What about the perimeter of Y? Y's perimeter is 50 centimeters plus 1 unit plus 3 units plus 50 centimeters plus 4 units. This is the same as 100 centimeters plus 8 units. Now let's go back to the sentence that we were looking at earlier. The perimeter of Y is 60 centimeters more than the perimeter of X. What's the difference when we compare them? These two 100s are the same, but the number of units here is different. 8 units minus 2 units is 6 units. In other words, we now know that 6 units represent 60 centimeters. Well done! How can we make use of this to find the length of BD? Well, we know that the length of BD is 4 units. Since 6 units represent 60 centimeters, we can find the value of 1 unit by dividing 60 centimeters by 6. This gives us 10 centimeters. Then, we'll multiply 10 centimeters by 4 to find how long 4 units stand for. Did you get an answer of 40 centimeters? BD is 40 centimeters. Well done for solving the first part. Let's look at the next part. Find the area of Y. Y is an odd shape, but can you think of any familiar shapes that we can use to help us out? 
We know that y is the remaining part when we cut two triangles from this rectangular piece of paper, agree? Let's find the area of the paper first. The paper has a length of 50 centimeters and a breadth of 4 units, which we found to be 40 centimeters. When we multiply its length by its breadth, 50 times 40 gives us 2,000 square centimeters. What about the area of the two triangles? One triangle has a base of one unit, which is 10 centimeters, and a height of 50 centimeters. We can find the area of a triangle by multiplying half by its base by its height. Since we have two of them, we can multiply this by two. Half times 10 times 50 times 2 is 500 square centimeters. And now comes the moment that we've all been waiting for. Let's find the area of y by subtracting 500 from 2000. Did you get an answer of 1500 square centimeters? Great job if you did!